Hey, what is going on everyone? Welcome back to the channel and welcome to the very good year of 2018. I really do hope that you guys are having a good start to your year out there. And before we begin today's video, I just wanted to quickly apologize for not putting a ton of content out on this channel for the beginning of the year. And basically, I've been working on two major projects for you guys out there. Uh, the first project is to rebuild the Tinder application, which kind of looks like this over here. It's not too difficult, but there's a lot of different types of features to work on so it's just taking a little bit of extra time and then we have the second project which is to rebuild the podcast application which kind of looks like this and it's gonna be a very interesting course with a lot of different features to build out so hopefully you guys will enjoy it all right so with all that out of the way let me quickly go over exactly what I want to teach you guys for today's video and basically the idea is to learn how to very easily group together objects that are inside of an array and I have a demo that I would like to show you inside of the simulator which is on the left side of the screen over there and this is basically a list of NBA stars and what do we have here we have Michael Jordan Kobe Bryant Magic Johnson Steph Curry and so on and so forth and let's say I want to group all these players by their age and so you see Curry is 28 KD is 28 Clay Thompson is also 28 and if I click on the group by age you see that all the 28 year old players are at the very top of the list right and if you scroll down all the 55 year old players are down over here this is not their real age this is just something I made up to make this example a little bit easier to go over so let me reset this back to the original list of players and instead of grouping by the age let's say I want to group by the first character of their last name so you see Jordan Johnson James and Johnson down below so if I group by last name all of the J last names are instead of a group kind of nicely packed together like that and all of the D last names like Durant, Drexler, Davis and Vladi Divox that's kind of grouped up above Curry and Carter, Bryant and Barkley so it turns out this feature is actually very very easy to build out using a new feature inside of the Swift 4 programming language and we're going to be using a dictionary grouping function that's actually very very simple so let's go ahead and get started with the code Okay, so now that you understand the idea behind our application and what we're trying to do in terms of the grouping of our NBA stars, kind of like that by age, as well as the last name over there, let me show you how this logic works by going through this kind of playground file on the left side. And basically we're starting off with a person struct right above that has a first name, last name, and age property on it. And then right below, we declare a list of these person objects using this people array. So we have Michael Jordan, Kobe Bryant, Magic Johnson, and then so on and so forth. That's kind of how we generate this original list over there. So here is the more interesting part of the video. And the question is, how exactly do we group these objects in here, perhaps by age, kind of like that, or by the last name, kind of like that. So. You know, this is actually very easy. So how do we perform the grouping? Well, inside of Swift 4, we have a new function called, or a new constructor on dictionary called grouping like that. So I'm just going to let's see grouped people or grouped dictionary equals all of that. And for this constructor, we need to pass in two parameters. First is the sequence of things that you actually want to group. And we're just going to pass in people down below. And the second part is something that might be a little bit confusing. So let's just hit enter, giving you this closure thing over here. So every one of your elements inside of your sequence, I'm just going to either call it P like that, or a person might make a little bit more sense. And then right to the kind of the right side, we need to make sure we return a certain type. Let me just use int. And inside of your closure, I'm just going to return and person like that. So this is the person over there. That's the person right there. And just return dot age. And now basically what you have done is you grouped all of your objects in here by the actual age property inside of that list. So if you open up this little guy, you'll see all of these properties, 41, 28, 55, those are the keys, and all the grouped objects are all these players inside of here. So, you know, that's kind of how you actually group by the age over there. So to make this maybe a little bit more easier to understand, let's actually group by the last name instead. So you can change this to string last name. 
And then you would also have to, after you get the first character of each one of these last names, for example, B, C, and D for all of those NBA stars, so you would just say dot first, kind of like that. So you see how it's an optional, so let me just unwrap it with the bang operator right there. And you can't exactly do this because this little closure is expecting you to return an int. So this is actually a character object, so let me just change that to character, and everything should kind of compile and work correctly. So if you inspect this variable now, you'll see J, B, H, C, D, and also T at the very bottom over there. And that's kind of how we group all of our NBA stars by their last name over there. So how do we actually make use of this grouped dictionary so that we can perhaps construct a list like this? Well, it's just a very simple array of array objects. So let's just say var, I don't know, grouped people equals an array of person objects or an array of arrays of people, kind of like so. And then you just have to kind of append onto this grouped object somehow. So the way I'm going to do this is to perhaps get the keys out of this dictionary first, so perhaps the J key. So let's say let keys equals grouped dictionary dot keys. Hopefully that will work. And let's see, there's an error. So I've noticed this before, and it might go away if I just call sort it like that. And I actually want to sort my keys anyways. So we have B, C, D, H, J, and T at the bottom. And so now I can just simply say, let's see, keys. Let's iterate through all of these keys with a for each loop like that. You can use key. And then what else do we want to do? Well, I'm just going to say grouped people like that from line 34 and I'll append onto it a list of people so I'm just going to grab it from grouped dictionary and I'll use this key up above as the actual accessor that I want to use and because this right here actually returns you an optional value you just want to unwrap it like that and everything should be okay so that's kind of what you get over there and if you now say group people like that and say for each hit you know perhaps enter I'll just use the shortcut of that and then I'll say print I don't know I think I actually need dollar sign zero and for each again for each one of these lists and inside of here I'll say raise print dollar sign zero again so this is all just shorthand for printing out objects down below so we get all of that and I want to just say print see this little separated line down below and then we will see exactly what's inside of our group people array so make sure this runs correctly and pull that up we see that we have all of our people objects reflecting this list over here because I've sorted all the keys correctly on line 36 so we have first name or last name Bryant uh, last name Curry Carter uh, all the D last names are grouped like that, and Harden like that, all the J's and Thompson at the very bottom. All right, so there you have it. Inside of Swift 4, it's actually very easy to perform this grouping logic using this new constructor of dictionary, providing it with a sequence and also a closure for whatever you actually want to group on. Now, if you want to download the source code for this playground right here and also for the application you're seeing inside of the simulator, you can use the download link down in the description below. If you enjoyed today's video, make sure to give it a thumbs up and also consider subscribing to the channel. That's going to be it for me today. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.